Well, good day again. It's, uh, it's Charlie. Um, just wanted to make a quick video before I have to disappear for a couple of weeks on a um, on a business trip. Looking at the the bandpass filter. Um, once again, rather than using um, sort of first principles to design the filter, I'm just going to use the potted filters that come out of out of this book. Um, if you can get your hands on it, it's a, it's a very very good book and covers a whole raft of different types of topics amplifiers and filters and um, and all sorts of things I can't show you what um, what's in here in regards to the filters because it's copyrighted and uh, I don't want to get myself in trouble but suffice to say it's a, there's a very good um, annex at the back which covers all sorts of things so we're going to do a, do a, a doubly balanced uh, filter um, and essentially looks like this it's expecting to see 50 ohms on the input and the output um, and has three series capacitors and two tank circuits. Um, I'm going to notionally use out of the back of the book uh, a 3.5 to 3.7 megahertz filter um, and then we'll just look at uh, modifying that or simulating it and then some modifications to that one. So when you look at the, the calculations in the back in order to make this filter here it needs two inductors um, they are an FT68-2 using number 24Y38 turns each and if you do the calculations on that it works out to be about 8.23 microhenries per coil and then what it then gives you um, is, a, is a very simple formula here for working out um, this capacitor and this capacitor here these three are given to you uh, in this particular case the one that couples the two uh, the two uh, the two tank circuits is 8.8 .8. the two end capacitance capacitors are 83.4 and they give you this topic here an, an overall capacitance of 224 picofarads and then they give you this formula here to work out like I say C1 and C2 so we uh, if we substitute in 224 minus C12 which is 8.8 .8, .8, minus the end capacitance 83.4 gives you a value for each of those capacitors of 131.8 um, now when you when you make up a filter like this what I tend to do is um, and I'm not the person who invented this one but it's, it's certainly what I have been following is rather than using say 131 picofarads I'll use say in this particular case 120 picofarads in parallel with a small trimmer uh, and they all come in different shapes and sizes. Now, something I uh, heard the other day on um, the Solder Smoke Exercise um, podcast, which I thought would be worth mentioning again, and uh, when we look at the oscilloscope, I uh, might have a chance to look at it. When you when you tune this, if I was to, to look at sort of what this looks like blowing up, it looks very similar to this. It's a, it's a capacitor that spins basically 360 degrees all the way around 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 so when the plates are fully meshed it's a maximum capacitance when they're fully unmeshed it's at minimum capacitance and there's obviously there's a value there which is the same as the value there and that's the key so when you come to make this circuit and you're tuning it up if I was to have um, like I say this trimmer capacitor in parallel then what I would do is I would look for a peak that doesn't coincide with the capacitor either being fully meshed or fully unmeshed. In other words, I'll, I'll be looking for a peak somewhere before or after, and then again the same on the other side. That way you know you haven't actually run out of capacitance in either direction. So like I say there, on either side of maximum there'll be a peak, it'll drop off, as you come around the other side, there'll be another peak, and then it drops off again. You can choose any one of those peaks, doesn't matter. It just means it's either on this side or it's on the other side. If you find there's only one peak, and either as you're getting fully meshed or fully unmeshed, then you've either got too much or too little capacitance. Um, and obviously if that peak there was in that orientation, I can just spin it around, then you've run out of capacitance, you don't have enough and conversely if the peak was occurring at that point in time then you got too, too much capacitance so therefore you might want to look at going say 110 picofarads 
in parallel with the trimmer cap. So that's just a little thing to look out for, and, and I've fallen foul of that before. And I thought that was worth um, mentioning again. What we'll do now is I'll, um, just for interest sake, uh, I also looked at the values that would give you um, supposedly a 3.8 to 4 megahertz uh, range with a 3 dB points on the passband. Uh, in that particular case, it comes out to be uh, exactly the same inductor. The end capacitances are 70.7. The capacitor that links the two together works out to be 6.9. And then C1 and C2 are 113.4 picofarads. It's all sort of roughly in, in QE. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to simulate this circuit um, using standard values. So I will use, rather than 83 picofarads, I'll pick on 82, which is a standard value. So that'll be for these two here. For the coupling one here, I will use um, 8.2, which is one I've got in the junk box. Um, and then for the external ones, we'll just simulate um, using a starting value of about 120, let's say again, 132 picofarads. So I'll use the exact value for simulation, and then I'll show later on what I did in terms of um, in the real world. So let's just break there. We'll crank up um, LT Spice and we'll have a look at the circuit. Okay, so um, here we are in LT Spice uh, with the circuit simulated um, using standard values. So for the two input and output capacitors, just using 82 picofarads. Um, for the coupling capacitor in the middle, um, 8.2 picofarads. And then for C1 and C2, which are notably labeled here C4 and C5, but the two um, capacitors in parallel with the inductors um, using uh, the 132 picofarads. So just, um, just um, using the value that came out of the formula. And I'll talk in a minute about how to do that in, in practice. And then the two inductors, so 38 turns on a T68-2 should be around 8.23 microhenries. So we'll just do a frequency plot of that. So we've got a, a simulation command over here. So we can right click on that. Um, and up here we can make the start frequency. We'll make it 1 megahertz. So 1 E6. We can do 1 with uh, 6 zeros. Doesn't really matter. And we'll do 30 E6. So we'll do the 30 megahertz. And uh, we'll look to simulate that. So that's all set up. And the little running man up here, we can simulate. Um, and we'll just make sure we're double clicking on the output. And we can see there uh, that peak in the, um, the passband there, sort of just below 4 meg. So that gives you a rough indication of what's happening across the whole HF band. And what we could do now, we can expand on that. So we go back to this tool, back into the simulation command. And let's run from, say, 500 kilohertz either side. So let's go 3E6. And then we'll run this up to, uh, say, 4.5. So 4.5E6. OK. And then rerun the simulation. And now we've got that bit more expanded out. Uh, and we can see the passband. Interesting enough, with these values here, um, the passband there, you know, the 3 dB points, we were dropped 3 dB down from the peak is, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, 3.65 through to sort of roughly 3.8. But that's fine because um, what I'm going to try here and what I wanted to do and I have done in, a, in another radio is put additional capacitance across this inductor just to pull the passband um, either way, either by adding or subtracting capacitance. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use a, another simulation command and I'm going to um, have three values of capacitance just to see what happens to the passband. So what I can do here, and I, I mentioned this on a previous video, um, these words up here are just a text box. And what I often do is I often sort of reuse simulations across different projects to sort of save having to start from scratch. And um, I have a lot of those commands sort of sitting there ready to go as a text box. So what I can do is I can right click on that text box, highlight the words I want, control copy, close the text box, and then now I can create the new command, which is this one here, Spice Directive, and control V, and I can paste it in. So I, I'm going to step through, that's what the step parameter here is, 
for a value called C, which you'll see in a sec, using a list of three values. Notionally, I'm going to use 120 picofarads, 135 pickers, 150. They're just plucks. So we'll just see what that happens to do. And we'll go OK. And then we have to place it somewhere. So we'll just place it there. Now, in order to use that C command there, the easiest way to do that, or the way to do that is, and we're going to do it from this one here and this one, is we right click, and rather than typing in a value, we're going to go squirrely brackets, C, close squirrely brackets, close, and over here we go right click, same again, squiggly, C, close, close. And as you can see in here, we've now got, if I was to expand up, you can see there goes the two values of C. So what happens now, when I do the simulation, we should get, and let's just simulate now, three plots. Uh, we've got the red plot there, the blue plot, and the green plot. And as you can see there, we have indeed pulled that pass band, um, sort of, we're using three different values of capacitor, um, or capacitance, across the whole band. Notice you know, that's a portion there, then that portion, then that portion. We don't get, unfortunately, um, it to go across the entire band in one go, but you know, this is a way we could actually use a switch or some other means to pull that pass band, so to speak, um, higher and lower in the band. Um, and in a previous radio I did that because I wanted to get the lower band actually down to about 3.3 megahertz where the New Zealand Mountain Safety Board radio um, net hangs out. So I had a, uh, some additional capacitors um, that were switched in to pull that right down because frequency as we know um, is roughly uh, 1 over 2 pi root LC so the C is on the bottom of the uh, the right hand side so any increase in capacitance will ultimately decrease the resonant frequency um, of a parallel resonant circuit so uh, well, in this particular case the way it's been configured anyway so that's that's pretty good and what I'll do now I'll just break here and I'll show you what I ultimately did do uh, because it's something I've been wanting to do for a while and it works well so what I'll do now is I'll just solder this up and um, and show you what I did do and we'll measure some input and output uh, voltages to look at the insertion loss and we'll see how effective that is back shortly okay so Here's the circuit made up. Now, what I've elected to do, if we were to just zoom up on the circuit there, you'll see the two capacitors that couple the signal coming in. This is the input, this is the output side. Those are those two 82 picofarad capacitors. You can see in the middle of the two tank circuits the 8.2 picofarad capacitor. And what I've elected to do in this particular case, because it's something I've really wanted to try, was rather than having a switch that switched different additional capacitors in parallel with say a hundred odd picofarad capacitor here I've elected to go for a, a variable capacitor and we'll see the effect of that uh, in a minute that way what I was trying to do and it actually seems to work quite well is not have um, the issue where um, I potentially have areas within the, the band where I'm getting into sort of the, the, the peaks aren't so again that I'm starting to get down to the 3dB points. If I have it continuous, that no matter where I am, I can always peak it. So that's what it looks like there. Um, this variable capacitor, like I say, has three separate sections. And I'm just uh, picking up on this section here and the furthest away one way from the furthest one away from that one here. Um, which is those two points there, and then the earth going back to the earth point, which allows me to, to vary that. So let me just pause there. I'll set up the, um, the SIG gen, and then we can look at some uh, the effect of the variable capacitor, and then we'll look at the um, insertion losses um, for the filter. Okay, right, so we've got the, um, the oscilloscope on here. So currently we're tuned for 3.7 megahertz, uh, and I'm putting yeah 3.7 megs in, and you can see here as I just on the bottom of the picture there as we um, tune it, we can get a nice peak coming through there. If we drop it down to say 3.5 megs, 3.5 megs is there, and then we can add a little bit more capacitance. So increasing capacitance on the bottom decreases the overall frequency, and we get a nice peak there. I can then wind up to 3.9 megs, 
we want to reduce the capacitance there and we get that nice peak so no matter where we are so pick a number 3.6 and we get that nice little peak there so I reckon that's quite good and it'll be interesting to see how well it works in the circuit uh, to sort of have that sort of peaking function which is I understand um, quite common with some of the older radios so in terms of insertion losses um, if we go back to channel 2 so channel 2 is our input and uh, I just did the measurements before we've got an input of 5.8 divisions at 0.2 volts and then if we look at the output we had 4.3 divisions at 0.2 volts so 20 log V out over V in we were getting minus 2.6 dB um, so uh, not quite 3 dB but um, for a passive device then that's certainly understandable so uh, that's that's pretty good and more than happy with that um, like I mentioned before ordinarily I would have these little trim pots that I would tune up and I would sort of pick a frequency so in the middle of the band uh, 3.7 then I would I'd peak it in that one but I'm quite happy here just to be able to um, to vary it so we'll see how that goes we'll put that into the circuit um, the only other difference I've decided to do is now move the position of the bandpass filter. It's now going to be directly uh, in front of the first mixer. So on the receive side of the house, we're going to have the uh, RF coming in. It's going to go through the RF amplifier, then into the bandpass filter into the mixer. And then on the transmit side of the house, it'll come out of the mixer through the bandpass filter and then through uh, the transmit uh, linear amplifier so that's what we'll do there rather than building two of these one dedicated for transmit and one dedicated for receive um, we'll just have one which uh, serves a dual purpose so uh, I'll leave it there apologies that I'll be away for a couple of weeks um, but uh, when we come back we will continue on any questions to sing out but uh, I'm quite happy with that cheers uh, and have a merry, merry Christmas if I don't catch up with you. Cheers all.